You know, I'm getting pretty tired of just about every new EV being the same looking melted small crossover. And you see them everywhere. Look, Model Y and a Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model Y and a Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model Y. So in the span of like a minute and a half in one Whole Foods parking lot, we've seen four or five Tesla Model Ys. And look, Kia is no exception. Their first EV was a somewhat small, albeit not melted crossover. But now we've got something a little unique, a proper Big Mac sized American three row, albeit from South Korea. Kia absolutely nailed the design because it's a square car and square cars always look good. Think about it. Ford Bronco, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, Nissan Cube. All right, maybe not the last one, but come on. This thing looks fantastic. The squared off front ends, the flat sides, the nearly vertical tailgate. Heck, even the wheels are square. Okay, not the tire bit, but the middle, it's a square. Now you're probably thinking being so square will affect the aerodynamics, but Kia says the EV9 is more aerodynamic than a Jaguar I-Pace and even a Lamborghini Huracan GT3. Although let's be honest, that's not a great comparison because that car is probably more designed for downforce than aerodynamics. And this is a true three row crossover SUV. Now this one has the captain's chairs. I am six feet tall and I actually have pretty good leg room, pretty good headroom. And what about the third row? Well, hey Tommy, thanks for having me. We got our good friend of the channel, Sofian Bay from Redline Reviews. And Sofian, you're in the third row of the EV9. How are you doing back there, buddy? You know, I. I'm a lot shorter than you, Tommy, and I have to say the back seat space here is okay, but as you can see, my knees are already up against the seat, and this is not with the seat all the way back. Headroom space, however, is a lot. Kia says there's like one and a half more inches versus the Telluride, and you can definitely notice that. Now look, when I say it's a proper Big Mac-sized American three-row, maybe I should say it's more of a quarter pounder. It's 197.2 inches long. Now that is five inches longer than a Tesla Model Y, but 13 inches shorter than a Chevy Tahoe. It's almost exactly the same length as a Kia Telluride, but a lot heavier. This vehicle as equipped comes in at 5,800 pounds. 5,800 pounds, that is some 1,300 pounds heavier than the heaviest Kia Telluride. And, and that actually makes sense because the battery pack alone weighs 1,248 pounds. And speaking of that battery pack, it's either a 76 kilowatt hour or a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, depending on how much you want to spend. And range varies from 230 miles, which isn't that great, all the way up to 304 miles, depending on all wheel drive and which battery you spec. How does that compare to other three row EVs currently for sale? Well, if you hate your kids, the Model Y 7 seater will allegedly do 315 miles on the charge. But I wouldn't recommend the back row for anyone that has, say, legs or, or feet. The Rivian R1S and Tesla Model X will go farther on a charge, but at a higher price point. All right, Sofian, walk me through the pricing on the EV9. Yeah, so the base version, the light with the standard range battery pack and rear drive starts at 54.9. Okay, so mid 50s is a very attractive price, but what if you want all wheel drive? If you want all wheel drive, it'll cost you nine grand more. Now that does give you more power. Um, it gives you all wheel drive. It also gives you more equipment, but nine grand is a lot of money. That's You're looking at 64 at that point. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more expensive. And what about this, you know, near fully loaded GT line? Yeah, so the GT line starts at around 73.9. It does give you a little bit more power, bigger wheels, a body kit, a massaging seat, head up display. This one here with the color and the destination charge though is like just under 79 grand. And that is one of the drawbacks with the EV9. Yes, the starting price is very attractive, but when you start loading up options and if you get a fully loaded one like this GT line, you're knocking on the door of $79,000. And that puts you within spitting distance of vehicles like the Tesla Model X, and maybe even the Rivian R1S. So if you're on zero to 60 in the EV9, 379 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque, what should it do zero to 60? Well, Kia says five seconds, but we'll see what we can do actually in the real world. Are you ready? Yeah. Try a little brake torque, I'm in sport mode. Oh, wow, look at that. There's 55 already and 60 there. All right. So we just ran that in 4.98. So 4.98 seconds, Sofian, according to your race box from zero to 60, mm -hmm. is that about what you were expecting? Pretty much, I mean, and also it's showing that we were also on a level ground. So it's about as accurate, accurate as you're gonna get in the real world. Now here's the thing, dude, right? 
the slowest version of the EV9 has 201 horsepower, mm -hmm. and Kia says 0 to 60 in that one at 8.8 .8 seconds. Yeesh. So pretty <laughs> big gap between the quickest EV9 and the slowest. If you want even more zip in your EV9, Kia is offering features you can buy after the fact. Features like new lighting designs on the front and a boost option which can reduce 0 to 60 time to under 5 seconds. We're going to talk about three hits with the EV9, starting out on the inside with the interior design. This is a really nice interior. It's kind of progressive in its design. And of course, the focal point are these three screens. That's right, I said three. You've got a 12.3 inch infotainment screen that runs the latest Kia operating system. And it's all kind of square and chonky, just like the exterior design. You've got a 12.3 inch cluster screen, which has some configurability. And then you've got this little five inch touchscreen in the middle here for the climate control. That's all really good. And then this top trim spec also has these fantastic synthetic leather seats with driver side massage. Sorry, passenger. But overall, this interior is really well made. Is it premium? I'm not sure it's premium. There's some nice luxury touches like this center trim panel, which looks very much like what Rivian's doing with the R1S. Uh, there's a couple of physical controls for the climate control and the volume. There's some haptic controls, which I'm really not a fan of, down the middle of the car. I'm not sure it's, it's quite as nice as something like the BMW iX, but it's definitely close, especially for uh, quite a few thousand dollars less. The great thing about the EV9 is that it holds a ton of stuff in the trunk as you'd expect because it's a box, go figure. Now we're looking at just over 20 cubic feet of space behind the third row. And if you fold them down, which you can do electrically in theory, but it's not happening. Oh man, that's the second row is electric. Sofian's laughing. Third row is manual. 43 and a half cubic feet worth of space with the third row folded down. And then we come to the charging because this thing is a charging beast. On a DC charger, this vehicle can peak at 210 kilowatts, 235 if you get the small battery. And Kia says a charge can take as little as 24 minutes, which is really good. It's also got a nice chunky AC charger as well. It's over 10 kilowatts to get you uh, nice and charged up at home. It's not all sunshine and roses with the EV9. Here are three misses surrounding this new crossover, starting with the front trunk. It's pretty tiny. In this version, it's 1.8 cubic feet worth of space, which is enough to hold maybe some groceries, a gallon of milk, maybe half a gallon. You know, Tesla has the front trunk, the frunk. This is more of a front cubby, a frubby. Next up, we come to the towing capacity. Kia says 5,000 pounds, which is pretty good, but keep in mind that's really only on the top couple of trims. Some of the base trims are realistically gonna be more like two to 3,500 pounds. So yeah, I mean, you can get up to 5K towing, but you're gonna have to spend a little bit more. And my last myth really comes down to the fact that this vehicle doesn't qualify for that $7,500 tax credit. It's not manufactured here in the US, at least currently. Now, of course, if you lease it, you can get some of that credit back, which is fantastic. And there are local and um, state incentives, but unfortunately, it doesn't qualify for $7,500 back. So behind the wheel of the EV9, dude, this thing drives really, really nice. Yeah, and what really impresses me is the ride quality of this car. Uh, even these with these big 21s, I think it has a really smooth ride. It feels heavy, but it also doesn't feel like it's kind of bobbing around like you get on some of these EVs. And it's not floaty like an old American car. Mm -hmm. It's not too stiff. They really nailed the ride quality. And it's also incredibly quiet in here. He is doing some interesting things from an EV standpoint here, Sofian. Like the noise when you accelerate. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, folks, but there's like a little like spaceship kind of whir when you hit the accelerator. Yeah, and you can't change the way that sounds. You can't increase the volume or turn it off entirely, but you know what? I actually really like it, Tommy. It adds to the whole drama of the, in the experience of the car. We also have a couple different levels of regen. So you got everything from no regen whatsoever when you let off the right pedal, all the way to the max regen through iPedal. And then in iPedal, the car will come to a complete stop without you having to touch the brake. I do like that feature. Uh, I think it'll be useful, especially if you guys are stuck in Russia or stop and go traffic all the time. 
Now look folks, I think Kia has a home run here. This is an actual usable three row electric crossover, which you know is kind of available on the market right now, but really not for under $80,000. And that's kind of my rub on this car, right? At the starting price of mid 50s, this thing is a bargain. At mid 60s, I think it's pretty good value. At 78 and change, as this one is spec'd, well, I might consider a Tesla Model X or a Rivian R1S for not that much more. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of the new EV9. Hopefully we'll get it out to Colorado, do some off-road testing, maybe some tow testing, and I'll let you know some more verdicts a little bit further down the road. As always, it's been Tommy and Sofian. We'll see you on the next video. Nissan Cube. <laughs> Not the Cube, no. <laughs>